The last time that I was not able to walk was straight after my C-section. And the last time before that, that I was not able to walk was when I pinched the cartilage in my knee in February, 2020. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Carla. Hi, uh, I make weight loss and life after weight loss, pregnancy, motherhood, and all different types of manner of content here on YouTube and also on Instagram at half of Carla. If you like that kind of thing, maybe consider giving me a subscribe uh, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. I have been sharing with you my postpartum journey over the last couple of weeks. So I am sharing how I am losing the 40 pounds that I put on during um, my pregnancy and also how I am working on myself in order to feel much better about myself after a battle with postnatal depression and anxiety. Today, I am gonna be giving you week three's recap and splitting that into the three different categories, the results, my feelings and observations. I also will link down in the description bar and I think the description has moved somewhere as well for some of you. So uh, if you can't find it, it's there somewhere. There is a little arrow beside the title of this if you're watching it on a device, um, like a mobile device, and that should drop down the menu or the description box as well to find it. But I will leave my full uh, journey there, the playlist of what I'm doing and the previous two weeks. And also I'll link down below a video about my original weight loss journey and how I lost 183 pounds. I'm gonna delve right in right now into the results for week three and how I got on. This week I lost uh, 1.1 kg or 2.4 pounds, which brings it up to 11.4 pounds that I've lost and uh, 6.8 kg, 6.2 kg. Uh, I'm really, really happy with the results so far. That is over a quarter of the way now to my uh, goal of losing 40 pounds. Uh, I don't have a specific date. I'm just gonna keep going till I see to get to the 40 pounds or see how I feel as well. I might be happy in and around uh, losing 35 pounds. We're just gonna see how we get on. I'm really, really delighted with those results that being over a quarter of the way there really start starting to give me that bit of drive and give me that bit of, you know, a bit of gung-ho to keep going. In terms of feelings, the word that I would use for this week and this part of the journey is reflective. It's been an interesting, week personally. Um, my It was the eight year anniversary of the passing of my father. Uh, there was also the previous day before that, there was a death in the family. And I've been reflecting a lot on my journey, my mental health journey and how it has supported me through weight loss. I think previously for any time that I was feeling down or difficult, I would have turned to food as a source of comfort and reassurance. However, it's no longer something that I turn to. I realize that now I, I just don't go for food as a source of comfort. I still like food and definitely probably did a little bit during my pregnancy because it was so consistent, especially near the end. But I have to say that I'm very proud of myself for the journey that I've come on and the work that I've done on my mental health. So the food is no longer the thing that I reach for when I'm feeling not great. Instead, I really notice that walking is so important to me, moving my body, getting outside. I'm very lucky to live beside the sea, even getting outside into the countryside getting some fresh air and at some points when there's sun, it's actually quite sunny in Ireland today, um, there's quite a blinding light coming this way, but getting outside, seeing fresh, seeing the sky, seeing getting fresh air really has a calming influence on me and really helps to, to for me to ground myself. So I'm not just reaching for food all the time, which is fantastic. I've also been reflecting that I was quite sad as well because I, my father isn't with me anymore. He's passed for eight years and he has never got to see me now as I am as a woman now, as a mom. And it's quite tough uh, for for that, you know, for him to have missed a huge part of my life. When, when he passed, I was extremely overweight and he's never got to see me battle and overcome my demons. And 
be able to lose that amount of weight and to live a really full and happy life now, which I am. And just because I'm living a happy life doesn't mean that I, there aren't points where I'm feeling a bit down, you know, I'm not on a positive level all the time, believe me, but I have much more positive times now than there are bad. And I think that that's something that's really important. And it's something that I'm very proud of that I am able to do now. I have the two cats here with me as well. So if you see something fluffy moving in the background, that's what's going on or something meowing. And I'm gonna move on now a little bit and talk about observations and things that I've noticed about this week. Probably the first thing that I've noticed is that I can still be hard on myself. I, if you've seen my walking videos or have been following me for a long time, you might know that when I started walking, and as which is the only form of exercise that I did to lose weight, I injured myself because I went gung-ho on the first couple of weeks, or the first week or two, and really badly injured myself. Uh, I ended up pinching the cartilage in my knee and really hurting my ankle. I went for a walk last week uh, with my sister while pushing the buggy or pram or stroller, or whatever you call it. And I noticed that my posture isn't as good. I haven't really gotten back into the proper swing of walking again. I can feel that since I've had my C-section, been pregnant, I haven't really been practicing really good posture for walking. So I've injured myself uh, in doing that, in walking with my sister at her speed, trying to keep up with her and not knowing that, uh, not realizing that I'm not that fit yet. And I have done something to my ankle. I kept trying to go, I'm being completely honest here, I kept trying to go, kept trying to push myself through and just like, oh, well, it'll be okay, to the point where it became really painful uh, at the end of the week. So just for you guys to know, my week is a Wednesday to Wednesday, I do weigh in Wednesdays. And so I tried to put, keep pushing and get through, but I ended up being quite in a lot of pain by Sunday and decided that it was time to give myself a proper break. And I did, I took two full days off walking and it was really difficult mentally for me to not walk. The last time that I was not able to walk was straight after my C-section. And the last time before that, that I was not able to walk was when I pinched the cartilage in my knee in February, 2020, like a few weeks into my, my weight loss journey. I could hear some negative self-talk coming in and I had to really reflect on my mental health and that this is something that I, I have to do. This is not an excuse. And I think I'm so afraid sometimes that the old me will rise up again and will start making excuses that I don't allow myself to listen to when I genuinely need a break and I genuinely need to, and I, I kind of, I don't trust myself that I will know the difference. And I was reflecting on that and I realized, no, I do know when I need to take a break and I needed to take a break. So I did for two days. And then I started walking back slowly again, shorter distances and at a slower pace. And now I'm back up to the starting, um, what my starting distance was at a slower pace. So it's, it's quite a process to get back to and it's really difficult for me mentally not to want to push through. But I know that in the long run, by pushing through, that I will only injure myself and I need to practice what I preach. So that is something that I, an observation I've been making um, or that I've been having this week is just looking back at how I'm talking to myself and making sure that I know that this is a, an act of self-compassion to take a break and not a, being lazy uh, or labeling myself as lazy. I've also noticed now that intermittent fasting, which I practice, I eat between 12 and eight, that my, that's my window, is now completely second nature to me again. Don't even notice that I'm hungry now before 12 o'clock, which is fantastic. I drink my water and my two coffees with cashew milk, not a bother. I've also remembered now as well this week and observed that I really love coffee. And I went off coffee, it was one, it was my first aversion during my pregnancy, it was my first morning sickness aversion. And now I'm back loving coffee, like 
as much as I did at the end of my, of the, before I got pregnant. So I just need to make sure that I drink enough water uh, as well as coffee. And that's something that's really important is to drink water uh, and not replace water with coffee. And that's quite tricky to do. Everyone, that is the end of this video and my recap of week three of my new journey. I hope you really liked it and I hope you are enjoying these recaps and my observations and how I'm getting on with this, this new part of my journey. I, I think for this week, it's definitely going to be continuing to focus on self-compassion. It is a long-term practice and I am going to, I know that we have friends in for the weekend and I will be eating out. So trying to make really good choices as well. So I'll let you know how I got on with that. And that's everything. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and come join me over on my Instagram, Half of Carla. I have uh, what I eat in a day. I think it's one of my most popular questions. I have a reel, I just did that, and I'll probably be doing a couple more over the next few weeks. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next week with another recap.